Hey, this is Jeremy and welcome back to Blender for Designers. This video is part two of creating a soda bottle in Blender. And part one was actually modeling the soda bottle, which I will link to in the description below. Part two is taking that model and what's called UV unwrapping it, which will allow us to put things like a label and other stuff on it. So that's what we're doing. And I'm actually creating this soda bottle for Mockup 3D, my new product. And I thought I'd walk you guys through the process and hopefully you guys might find it useful. So now let's grab that model we made in the first tutorial and get started. All right, so here we have the bottle we made in the first tutorial, and here we have the keyboard viewer so you guys can follow along with my keystrokes. Blender used to have one, but uh, it seems to have been depreciated. So anyway, you can see when I hit shift or whatever. Um, and actually the first thing we're gonna do is take the bottle, which I still called circle, and we'll call it bottle. So now we're gonna go ahead and UV unwrap this, which means we're gonna figure out a way that we can wrap a 2D image around the surface of this 3D object. So first, to do that first, let's just grab a 2D image we can use as a reference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up the UV image editor, that's where we put images. And uh, it's set, set on render result right now, it's just gonna go blank. And I'm actually just gonna create an image that's created by Blender and is perfect for figuring out how it's going to wrap around 3D objects. What I am talking about is the, uh, you can't see that behind the keyboard, right? So what I am talking about is the color grid. So I'm gonna call this color 1024 since that's how big it is. And what it does is it creates this, this color grid. And I can bring this back down now. Since, um, so this will be a good indication of where these areas are laying on this bottle. And how we see that is we actually go into texture mode and we don't see anything yet, but that's because we have to change what this material looks like. And to change the material, I had already set up a material before just to do some quick tests on plastic, but we can go into the node editor to play with the material here, and we can hit N to get rid of that extra shelf. And then all we have to do is have the texture image somewhere in here. It doesn't have to be connected to anything, but we just need to get a node with that texture. And so to do that, we can either hit the Add menu or hit Shift-A to bring up the Add menu. And so we add texture, image texture, and then it should be on our list of textures since it's already been created. So boom. So now we see, you, you might have seen that this turned purple, uh, which basically means that that's what's showing this texture wrapping around here. And I'll show you what that texture looks like again. We'll go back to the UV image editor. So what's actually happening is nothing's wrapping. There's no UVs on this yet. So, you know, we don't see any of the image being wrapped around here, but uh, we're gonna create the UVs, so we'll see it in a minute. So the basic way you create UVs is you gotta go into edit mode, and then there's a couple of ways you can do it. But let me just do the very, very basic. So if we tab into edit mode, um, and then we can, so shift A, to, uh, hit A, hit the A key, hit the A key to deselect everything. So you hit the A key to deselect everything. It either selects or deselects everything. And then conveniently we can go into UVs and I uh, can select everything and we can just hit unwrap and it should actually unwrap. And you can see that now we have this the UV unwrap in a pattern and it's actually unwrapping. It's not unwrapping in a very good way. So we're gonna just undo that command Z uh, and we'll do it in a bit more organized of a way, but there's lots of ways you can do it and I'm gonna do it in one particular way. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it actually is I'm gonna do it the way I do a lot of cylindrical objects is basically take the top and the bottom uh, separately from the middle. So let's do the top and the bottom. Um, in fact, what we're gonna do is go ahead and hit command seven to go to the very top and hit five to go to orthographic view. And then I'm just gonna take, actually I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna take this edge and I'm going to hit mark seam, which is gonna kind of isolate this. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here at the bottom edge and mark seam. And then actually, you, probably, you actually don't need to mark the seams for what I'm doing now, but it, it's useful anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I take the very top edge or just hit A, make sure everything's deselected before you do this. And I'm just gonna select everything on the top. So that's gonna select everything there. I'm gonna hit seven to go to 
to strictly top mode, and then I'm going to unwrap by just projecting it. So, you know, it just it's a flat surface, so whatever you see is just going to project right on there. So, to do that, I can go unwrap and project from view. You can also do that just by hitting the U key, same menu, U key, project from view. And now we see, in a more organized way, that the top is, is projecting. Now it's around the Ds, now it's around the Es. I want to get it way here at the top and actually make it pretty small, because the top is pretty small. So we're going to put it front, right in the center, right in the top, and on the center, kind of between the Hs right there. So that's good. All right, so I'm going to hit the A key again to deselect, and then I'm going to go to the bottom. To do that, you hit Control numpad 7. And then same thing we're going to do. Boop, boop, and then we can actually just use the B key here. And then again, same, same procedure, project from view. And uh, yeah, now we have it in the front and center again. We don't actually want that. Let's just, bottom's not really that important. So let's go just tuck it up here around H8. And we can come back and play with that later. Uh, so great. Okay, but now, so we can A, deselect again. And now you see we have the top and the bottom all set. But what about the sides? Okay, so the sides I kind of want to unwrap. And actually, I'm going to probably take that somewhat literally and unwrap it sort of according to, you know, I'm going to basically cut one edge and then kind of peel it apart like a, like a rind or something. So these, these two seams are going to be, I'm going to cut from there and there, and then I got to cut from one other place. And the one other place I'm going to do is the back. So that's the front view. I just hit numpad one, but if I hit control numpad one, you get the back view. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take this very back seam, I'm going to select it as an edge loop. So option shift, right click. And then we're going to mark it as a seam, except we don't want the middle bit. You know, we don't want the bits that have already been projected. So to get rid of them, I can just hit the B box select and then hold shift to deselect those. And we can do the same thing on the very bottom. B shift to deselect. And let's just make sure those are all deselected correctly. We can actually go into our modifiers and take a look at it in this mode. And so we can actually see all the curves of the vertices. So yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna hit one to go to the front again, or actually I'm gonna go to the back and I'm gonna hit mark seam. And that way it creates a seam that we can cut from. So then what we do is we want to select all the stuff kind of in between here. So there's a couple ways to do that. Um, let's actually get rid of that uh, image for now. We don't need it. And we can move this a little bit over. So now we can. We just need to select everything, except basically the top and the bottom. So what we can actually do is we can go. Uh, you know, we could always. We could obviously just select a bunch of edge loops here until we get that right. Or what we can also do is we can hit face select, and then we can go transparent like that. And then we can just hit a box select. Well, first of all, let's make sure we're all unselected. Um, and then we can box select literally every face that's showing. And let's just see what that looks like. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. It looks like it's working. Okay, cool. So we're just projecting those elements. So that's cool. Um, and then we can do that by just U and then just straight up unwrap. And we can see how that all projects like that. Now, it's kind of bendy and weird because it's just by default. So there's a couple things I actually want to do here for a sec to kind of make this good. Um, one thing I want to do is straighten all those out. And then you could, we could probably straighten them out by simply selecting these edge loops and then scale x0. We can do that one at a time. It's kind of boring. There's a plugin we can use or an add-on to release some of the tedium, and I'll go over that in a minute. But first, I actually want to separate the cap out just a little bit. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to select the cap, and then we're going to just project that. So we can just do unwrap. And there, we kind of have a little bit of a curve. I actually want that totally 100% straight. So we'll just do this for the cap for now because it'll be a, be a bit simpler. But we're going to use a plugin, and I mentioned this plugin before and kind of didn't really explain it. 
So what it is, is it's called the UV squares plugin. And it's, it's a standard plugin that comes with Blender. It's not particularly complicated. It's under here under the Mist tab. But the way you install it is you actually go into, the way you install any plugin, uh, is you go into user preferences and then you go into add-ons, actually it's called an add-on, not a plugin, and you search for UV squares and you can click it and then install. It's already installed on mine, so I'm not gonna do that. So then what we can do is we can just go to two grid by shape, boop, and then it just aligns that really nicely. And then the cap's not that big, so I'm just gonna shrink this down and make that a bit smaller. And then I'm just gonna put it over here uh, for now, we can always move it later. So we have, so if we look at our UVs, let's uh, deselect and then hit A to reselect everything. So here we have, this is the cap, or this is the cap side, this is the cap top, and this is the rest of everything. So now we wanna set up the part of the body that isn't the cap. So we'll just go select that. So what we'll do is we'll go back to face select, x-ray view, and then we'll do, uh, let's go to x-ray view. Everything from here, down. And now I just have to get rid of some of the faces here on the cap. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's, this is actually sort of the main body of the whole thing. It's not the very bottom, it's not the very top. So what we're gonna do is, uh, so we've already projected it. Oh, we can also include this. Got that confused with the seam. So what we can do is we can just do the same thing we did there, to grid by shape. Okay, and it basically did what we wanted to do. Let's turn off x-ray view, except as you can see, it's rotated by 90 degrees. So that's easy enough. Just go into their UV image editor and then R90. And boom, now it's right side up again. So cool, We now we have, this is the body. And we can just uh, select everything. We have, this is the body, this is the cap side, this is the cap top, and this is the bottom. And now that we have our UVs unwrapped, we can rearrange things to make it a bit easier. Uh, I'm gonna just bring the UVs right front and center, and then I'm gonna take the main body, and actually if you wanna select one of these islands, it's actually the same way you select uh, linked things in geometry. You just hit one point, and then Control L will select the whole linked thing. So I'm just gonna move this just a bit, kind of front and center, and make it nice and really big, because uh, this is gonna be kind of our main thing. So we'll bring that all the way, maybe it's a little bit smaller. But the key thing is to get this, sorry, you hit S to scale and G to move. Same, again, same thing with 3D geometry. And then I wanna make this pretty small. Control L, scale this down, and we'll just leave, we'll just leave this kind of on the top bench. Uh, I mean, one thing, the one reason I wanted to do it this way is I wanna have the, the cap top and the cap sides kind of associated with each other. So if you want to make the cap one color, we can just bring an entire color right here, just all together. So actually I'm gonna make this even a bit smaller. And then we can make this a bit larger. In fact, what I can do is I can just scale here from the 2D cursor. So make that nice and big, not too big. Yeah, maybe just, you know, there's a nice line right there. And then that way the bottom can be just right here. And I can just leave it right there, that seems fine. Uh, so that way, this is the cap, this is the bottom, these are the top. This is sort of the main business. So let's see how that all looks. We can hit shift space. By the way, shift space will kind of full screen something. I actually don't use it that much outside of tutorials, but, uh, so we can see kind of how this is all going. And we do notice a few funny little distortions. There's always distortions when you do UV because, you know, unless you have a box, and even then sometimes things distort when they go from 2D to 3D. But well, let, let's look at one of these distortions here. Um, you know, this is pretty normal since it's just kind of a distorted thing anyway. You probably just want to preserve that, not a big deal. But this one, you can see that the E's and particularly the F's get very stretched out. So we can actually, there's a couple ways we can compensate for that. The, the, the main way, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab these top bits. And that, this, these are just uh, option shift, right click, just they're, uh, they're edge loops, just like you did, just like you used before. So we can do GY to kind of make this a little bit less distorted. And we see we're doing that. There we go. So we want to just look at these squares to kind of just see to make sure I have about the same proportions. And then 
So we actually missed one in there, didn't we? G, Y. So we just Y, so we just go in one direction. And then, yeah, we can then just get rid of that, and then G, Y, this, just to kind of... So we actually see we have a lot more data up here than we otherwise would. There's kind of another approach you could do. Um, the reason I did this one is because we can go all the way to the back and it's still pretty seamless. Um, but if you wanted to, you know, if we wanted to, we could just uh, just do all of these top bits kind of separate. Let's get rid of that, and then and then we can just you know, to kind of do the distortion, we can scale this in X a little bit, and then that way it'll kind of fix the distortion, but we can see, which looks fine on the front, at least for the Ds, we'll fix that in a minute, but then it, it kind of messes up the way that the back seam works, and I kind of want to keep the back seam, so let's just, let's leave that for now, um, just undo everything, Command Z, or Control Z, I guess, when you're, if you're in PC land, uh, Control L, of course, will create that. Uh, as a horizontal thing. In fact, since uh, this is getting so vertical, I might re rearrange this. Um, so here I am taking the time to re rearrange this. And what's nice about Blender is, of course, you can be indecisive like this. So if something doesn't work out, you just move stuff. And the tools are exactly the same as 2D images. You can just, you know, you can click one thing, you can G to move, R to rotate, and just arrange it. And you can arrange it off screen to move stuff around. So. Very nice to be able to rearrange UVs like this. So now, of course, that we've rearranged things, I can play a bit more with the distortion. What's great here now is I can box select the top to just play with the distortion on the neck. So I can go ahead and box select that. And yeah, so I'm just going to tweak the distortion here. I, you know, for particularly for mock-up 3D, I really want to make sure the UVs are really nice and, you know, some people can just drop an image there and use it very easily. Uh, if you don't have anything, say, on the neck, you may not need to care about this all that much, but this is the kind of tweaking I'm doing right now. All right, so now I can hit numpad one. So now I can hit gumpad one to go to the front view and see the whole distortion and how it all wraps around. So, looking good, looking good. All right, so now to get actual art on here, we want to actually take this UV layout and then start drawing on it. So let's take the UVs, let's go to UV, export UV layout, and actually I want to make this 2048 by 2048. And I'm just gonna make this fill opacity 0.5 for reasons that I won't get into. So now I can go into Photoshop and I can open the UV layout in Photoshop. And there we have it. So the first thing I want to do is obviously we want a white cap. So I'm just going to hit U to create just a white object right there. So that'll be on the cap. Um, in fact, let's put that down so we can see the UVs. Then everything else, I'm just going to leave clear, except I want the label. And let's figure out where that's going to live. So the label looks like it's going to be actually not that big, to be honest. Yeah, kind of like between the C's and the D's, kind of D, yeah, this, this thing right there to that thing right there. So let's just... Uh, Let's, let's make a white label, so we can call this cap, and then we can call this label. So I think it's going to go, yeah, kind of right there. And then, depending on how we do this, we can make it not quite fully wrap around, and maybe, I don't know, let's just put some round edges on there. So we can, yeah, this is, this is how you do round edges in Photoshop. You'll hit that first then you can kind of create just a slight round edge. So it looks like we're wrapping kind of a round label around. So let's see how that looks. Obviously, we do not want the UVs. We'll call that the UVs. And then we want to get rid of the UVs and save this as bottle layout.png. And to see how that works in Blender, we can just bring that into the material. Now, I'd already created a material at the end of my last one. Uh, so let's just hit, uh, let's just hit tab out and hit shift Z. So we got this kind of plastic material. So let's, uh, let's go out of orthographic mode so we can actually see it in perspective. And then we're going to go into the UV, I'm sorry, the node editor here so we can actually play with the material. And then we can change this image texture to bottle layout.png. All right, so what we actually want to do is we want to mix this, this plastic material. This will be... This will be the kind of plastic material we have. What we have is actually a, a glass, a clear, and then combined with a glossy going into a mix, and we can combine that with the label. So let's just do another mix shader. 
Shift D to duplicate, and then we can use since the since the image is transparent, where you know you have the bottle, we can actually just use the image's alpha channel to mix between the plastic material and the blank shader. Yeah, perfect. So this we have no shader there, so it's black. So we can see how the late just looking at the shape. Obviously, we don't have an actual material on there, but we can see how that wraps around fairly nicely, and then we can actually create an actual material there. We can actually use shader. Let's use the, uh, let's use the, you know, principal BDSF here. The whole, the uber shader, uba, uba. So we can uh, then drag that in there and we get white and then, but we actually want to use the color, which is white anyway, so it's not going to change things terribly much. But, you know, if we want to make it metallic, we can do that too. And we want, you can change the, uh, you can change the roughness. In fact, let's do change the roughness because this is not going to be, so I want to be a semi-shiny label. So there we go. We've wrapped now a label around the bottle and we also created the cap. So now let's go put some art on there and we can go back into Photoshop and let's take this as the label. Let's just make that a nice red. And then put my logo on there. I, am, I have a uh, smart object here from Illustrator that is my logo. And we can just scale that down a bit. And I'm not actually sure exactly where that's supposed to go. Well, let's just guess. Uh, we'll figure this out in a minute. We do want to keep it nice and centered. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and save this. Um, we can replace the original one and then go back to Blender and then just reload that. And there we go. It's a little too, I want to get it to the right just a little bit. So we can go redo that, just like move this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I don't know, something like that. And then, uh, sorry, resave again and then just reload that again. There we go, that's pretty good. And then one thing we will notice is that, well, it's a little hard to see, but you can actually see the label through there. And we actually, we really don't want that. So what we're gonna do is I wanna create a slightly different material for the inside. So we have this solidify modifier here and uh, we can do what's called a material index offset or whatever. So we can just add this material index offset, which means that when we add a second material, uh, let's call this out, let's call this bottle. We can add a second material. We'll just use the other, we'll use bottle for now, but we'll actually, we'll actually create a second one. So we'll call this inside. Then what we can do is we can keep the same alpha, but keep the color a white, or I mean, we can make this a dark gray or something, but it'll keep it a solid color. So when we look through here, we don't see the artwork. Cool. But so, you know, we'll basically just make sure we keep updating this texture on both materials. All right, so now this looks great, except for one thing. We notice that the cap is smooth and it should not be smooth. There should be some little grippy bits on here. So how are we gonna create those grippy bits? Well, we're gonna use something called a bump map. And what a bump map is, is it's a grayscale image where the gray means no bump and white means bump up and black means bump down. And to create that, I went into Illustrator and you can see here, I've actually created some ridges here. So we have white, which it goes up and black, which goes down. These are actually two separate layers. They're just a series of, the reason I did Illustrator is they're a series of strokes with a blur applied and a blend between them. I'm not gonna go over how I did it in too much detail because this isn't an illustrative tutorial, but it basically amounts to creating a stroke, duplicating it, and then creating a blend to create a bunch of different strokes between them, blurring it, and then just tweaking it a little bit. Let's just say there was a lot of trial and error involved. The other question is, how do I know where to put them? I have basically a 1024 by 1024 square image, and I have obviously a neutral gray background and then the bumps. So how do I know where to put them? Well, you can guess probably from the third layer, the UVs. I just imported the UVs, and you can see that this area, which is where our cap is, is exactly where I put them. And they, of course, they can overflow a little bit. That's not a problem. So great, now what do we do is we just, we get rid of the UVs, and then we go to, I can't, you can't see it, but it's file, export, export as, and then we'll call this bottle bump, make sure that we are using artboards. 
hit export. And then this is all fine. And then we'll go back into Blender and we'll import that image. Just duplicate that, Shift D to duplicate and make sure, uh, let's load up the image. Uh, it should be called bottle bump-01. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure we're on non-color data. I don't know how much that matters, but you know, it's probably a good idea. Oh yeah, and then we want to have a bump node, which we do by Shift A vector bump. And that what it does is it turns basically a bump into a normal. So we put, put color into height, and then we put normal into normal. And there we have it. We have now got a little bit of some ridges right there on the cap. Now I think that's going a little bit far, so let's back the strength down to like a quarter. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now it's time to render this bad boy. And what I actually want to do is I want to set up a scene where we put it here next to the original uh, bottle that we shot for reference. So to do that, I actually want to just set up the 3D view. Um, and I've actually already set this up, but I want to set up a camera. And since I used a very, very telephoto camera, we want to reproduce that. So going into our camera settings, we want the, the focal length, I have it at 90, which is quite telephoto. All right, and then we can go to this 3D view and hit numpad zero so we get into camera view. And you can see I have this kind of lined up right there on the right. And uh, what we actually want to do is we want to add another background image. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And you can't see anything right now because we need to set the film to transparent. And there we go. Now we see it right next to each other. Let's go ahead and leave that in the back, but make this 100% so they're lined up lovely right next to each other. And now that we've done that, we can remove the sidebars by hitting NNT. So cool. And then we can maybe just tweak this just a little bit by hitting Shift C Alt Home. And then we can rotate along the 3D cursor. So R X, we can kind of change the perspective slightly. And maybe G Z Z to kind of play with how big this is. And then G Y Y to kind of change the framing up a little bit. All right. And then what I want to do now is change the lighting. I had actually added some lighting already right here. You can see it's actually fairly complicated to try to kind of reproduce some of these highlights. Not exactly, but just, you know, give you some of the same idea. And then one thing we can do is just rotate this in Z just a little bit to get that kind of centered nicely. So now what we can do to maybe match these colors a little bit better, although we can always change it in post, is we can go back into our material. So go back into our node editor and grab the material. Sorry, and grab the bottle material. But uh, we can change this green color, but of course we also have to change it on the inside. So let's set that up. So what we want to do is we want to create a color, input RGB color, and we'll just grab the same color for now. And then what we want to do is we want to create a group out of this. So we go to make group. So great, okay, and we'll call this, we'll call this node group. We can hit N and we can call this bottle color. So basically the reason we do it this way is that now we can control C and we can N to get rid of this and then go back to inside, control V and we can connect both to the same color. So let's go back to the, the main material and then when we tab into this group we just have this one color so let's see if we can't make this a little bit more you know, not quite so green, maybe more of a cyan color and maybe make this just a little bit lighter. And so now we go, so now when we go into the inside, we see we have that same cyan color in both materials. But honestly, I don't think that went further enough. So I'm just gonna tweak that just a little bit more. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. I mean, again, it's not exact. We can always, we can always tweak it in post. But uh, let's get this thing ready to render. All right, so what we want to do is we don't obviously want to render the entire thing. So let's do control B, and then that way we're only going to be rendering this part right here. And we have a little floor there, but we can uh, fade that out or get rid of it or something. And then we can set up our render. So uh, I believe I already have it set up for 500 samples, um, and then 100% 1920 by 1080, but obviously we're not doing the whole thing. So then we can just go to our big render button and hit render and it should start rendering. Now I'll just speed through that render and speed through compositing it in Photoshop. And there you have it. That is the bottle modeled in Blender. 
And of course, I've also put it in my product, Mockup 3D. It's down here in the models, and of course I've put it under beverages, and I've made it free. So you can take your free soda bottle, and you can add an image without any watermarks. Of course, we'll get rid of this text. Put that right in the center there. And I don't know, maybe just for fun, we'll make it metallic. There you go. And like anything else in Mockup 3D, you can go ahead and click on this shareable link, and then you can share a fully rotatable 3D link with anyone you want. So there it is, a soda bottle in Blender. Hope you guys enjoyed that, found it useful. Thank you for watching, and have a good one. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.